gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it. We are on it. But most importantly, go to our Patreon channel. That's where you're going to see our full length interviews. Because, you know, Mr. E Love. To, to chop it up chop because it that's up. that's the name of the game. We got to te- keep the people's attention span as well, and we got to pretty much if you cut something what, like you, you know, sometime when I'm feeling myself, I let you cut my steak up. You know what I'm saying? It's just much yeah. better when you cut it. I'm sitting back there waiting on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like to cut it sometimes. So digest it like, better. Cut, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm cutting the steak so everybody. When I cut it in the scenes, I'm really trying to give you something. And and to be honest with you, a lot of times you might miss it if I don't cut it in dynamic. Sure. I, I I pull, I pull stuff into it and all kind of stuff. So I hope you guys, because some people love the clips. I've had people to stop me in the stores. I've had people to say, hey, man, keep the clips coming, man, because they want to. They don't want to look through it and find the meat. They want me to find the meat for them, bro. But the full-length yeah. interviews can be found also on our YouTube channel as well, under our membership package. So go ahead and support the brand. You know what it is. Man, hey, man, I, I, hey, listen, you better support us, man, because hey, yeah, we only here by, by faith. Exactly. Man. Listen, man, we got a couple of guys in here today, y'all. These guys here don't need no introduction, man. These guys been, hey, man, listen, man. These When I tell you they got a story, man, they been through it, man. Hey, man, I got Louisiana in the building today. Y'all know how I am sure. from Texas to Louisiana. I'm in the South. And to be honest with you, this show right here is different because we always, you know, we rep this whole Southern region, man, like no other. Man, and I think we're we're being that that voice. All our people are getting a voice down here, Indeed. telling people the true story of how things are. And ain't no big eyes and little U's when it come down to Boss Talk 101, man. These guys, these guys right here, though, listen, man, when it come down to the streets and the things that these guys have faced, man, they have extraordinary stories, man. And Kunta been on here before, man. Yes, sir. Kunta yes, been sir. on here before, yes, and I'm gonna be honest with you, Kunta, one of them guys, man. I don't play about. Uh, his, his he he gonna always be able to come on Boss Talk One On One. Whenever he say the word, I'm pulling up the cameras. You know, what I mean? if I don't end up back in New Orleans, man. Yeah, yeah, but he so. brought some people with him today, man. These guys is heavy, man. My boy Chuck is in the building, man. Charles the Daniel, building, man. Sure. Yeah, and, and and Everett O'Fray, man. Big big buff is in the building. Definitely, definitely yeah. O'Fray is definitely in the building, man. Man, listen, definitely. man. <laughs> listen, man. Hey, man. You guys, man. Y'all story is different, man. You know, each one of you guys have done extensive amount of time, man. But I, I, I want to get it right, man. Chucky, you did 27 and a half years. That's right. And you did the same? Yeah, 27, 27 and a half? half. Yes. You did 28, cool? Pushed me out one year, and we all got a half added on. That's all right. of y'all did 28? You did 28 and I a half? Did 28, they did 27 with a piece, and I did 28 with a piece. Wow. Mm. What, what's up with the halves, though? The halves is uh, enough time for you to make that decision whether you're going to cow out. Mm. <laughs> Are you gonna fight the charge? It's all it's, it's the strategy that they use, you know. That little, yeah. that little change is always the court dates in and out, making decisions. You know it's whether the people gonna, you know, force you into taking a deal that you don't want to take, because you want to be free after the years you don't put in. Or you, you gonna sit it out? Me myself, I had to sit it out. Wow. So all you guys was was it around the same time that you guys was locked up? Yeah. Yes. 94, 94, 95. He was in first. I, I was in first. first. He in first. Nine. He came. I come right behind him. And then him. he came. He come right us. behind him. And all of y'all knew each other before you went in jail? No. 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 I knew no. him before. Me and him was they enemies before other. I went to jail. Oh, yeah. wow. Y'all just didn't rock it because y'all was from different neighborhoods? Yeah, we were from different neighborhoods. That's it. But we was close in the sense of his family. Right. Okay. His sister played a big part and me and him not either taking each other out because me and his sister are real close. So with that man said, it just was, if I catch you slipping, he got me. If I caught him slipping, Wow. wow. I wanna I wanna I wanna get the big buff, man. Like we like to go down through that. We wanna mm-hmm, go into the just the detail. Cause we got something on Kunta. Kunta gave us the spiel on the right. first interview. Right. But I really wanna know we wanna go back just a little bit in your background. What part of you of from New, New Orleans? Orleans? Definitely. What part? what part? I'm from the Florida Project. Yes. Okay. Yes, the night well, they say the night well, but I say the Florida Project. Yes. Never heard that before. Right. Florida, why they call it you that? You never heard of the Florida Project? No, Jeez. I heard Ninth Ward, but not Florida yes, Project. Yes. See, the Ninth Ward is made up of different parts: the Florida, the Desire, cross the Canal is the Lower Ninth Ward, 
and every, all the other parts they consider as the upper night walk. Oh, okay. Like the Florida Project, Desire Project. The night walk has two projects, the Florida and the Desire. They right across the tracks from each other. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So how is it? I mean, is it, it's impoverished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely mm-hmm. probably deep. definitely the ghetto for the, real. I see. Yeah, really the, the ghetto in real life. Point. Was it any it? rappers the from like like from the night the walk? Is wow. night walk. Well, right now, right now they got like you know YD the illest. He's out of the Florida project. He, you know, he's smoking in the city right now. You know, mm-hmm. but, but back then, back then we ain't really had nothing from downtown. With what? Man, it's fresh and Gregory D. We had what? Man, it's fresh and Gregory we'll D from down there. Yeah, yeah, nigga, that's big. Ball. You just yeah. said something huge. <laughs> man, I seen the bus when Mac was on there and they put that damn video together. That's huge. Yeah. You talking about just man and fresh? Yeah. You yeah. can't just man and fresh. We got one more. Who is well? One more. They always tuck him under. Big Mike, Big Mike. Yeah, Mike. Whoa! Yeah, Big Whoa! Mike. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 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 I'm looking for this dude. I'm so sick right. of them overlooking Big Mike. They stay Mike. Bro, this they dude is... Big Mike when come to South and Big you Mike can't half big. of the thing down. He right. smashed these dudes. Listen, the album came out. Don't talk about it that That's summer. Right. And and when it came some out... Some serious steals. Some serious steals. No, the some serious one. Yeah, some When I was in the park, man, you didn't skip a song. People don't like to talk about that part. You can listen to all of that whole album. I'm just a player, player, all right, of that. You better and be that either. thing was smoking. Shout out to Jay, would rap a lot. You know that's what I'm right, saying? All right, that stuff was hard. That was man. one of his greatest. That's I don't care how he cut it. I don't care what was going on. The Mike camp. stayed called the street. Mike, man, his Dell brother was real cool. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It stayed on the other side of the project. Yeah. You know, they got two sides of the project white side, black side. That's mm-hmm. what they called it. And mm-hmm. um, we stood on, like, in between on Elva, and they stood on Elva, too, but they still crawled the street from us. Me and his little brother used to hang out together. I don't really know Mike like that mm-hmm. because he wound up moving to out here to Texas. Of course. But, you know, I you know, I know him from seeing him, whatever, like that, yeah. That was hard, just the fact that he come from there and Manny Fresh and you said Gregory D? Yeah, Seven Ward. They from yeah. Seven Ward, though. But it's still it's close still by. downtown. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's downtown. Wow, yeah. man. And and like I said, it's just the history of the New Orleans sound and, and just the jazz and all that, right. it, that come with New Orleans, man. That whole situation, when I went down there, I'm five miles from Louisiana, as I always tell people. I'm on the Texas side, but every time I came into Louisiana, man, just the feel of the people and the culture. Right. It's just, it, even from Shreveport on down, Natchez, all the way down in the Monroe, it's a different feel when you start going into Louisiana, man. I'm telling you, man. Alexandria, you know, what was that, Lawton, what was that called? It's a Lofton, a lot. It's a couple of places down there. Lafayette. Lafayette. It's a couple of, it's a dude came on here the other day, uh, Marcellus the singer. He from down in Louisiana and, and, and Rustin. Is it yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a bunch down. It's gotcha. a, you got to unpack that whole thing, yeah, bro. Right. And then when you start hitting BR, Baton Rouge, and then hit New Orleans, nice. you deep down in there. Yeah, all that flavor. <laughs> all that flavor. Say, you yeah. can't cook, though. Definitely. You can't cook. <laughs> you, hey, you know, I call people out on this show. I'm too much some proud. I can't do that. I'm too much some proud, man. <laughs> can you dabble a little? I can do it a lightweight something. <laughs> 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 Oh, man, so just when you, what was, what did they ended up, how did you bump your head, like? Oh, man, it's just, you know, man, coming up like I came up, man, seeing a lot of different things, bro. You know, what I knew, now that I didn't know them, man, we was, we were, we were kind of experiencing a whole bunch of, um, like, mental stressing, all kind of, you know, at a young age, seeing dolphins out in the hallway seeing people get killed, get, you know saying, people get shot. We go to school, nobody address those issues. So we hold them, you know, only thing they want to know about the work or whatever like that, you know, where your school work at, make your grades right. But nobody mess with the trauma that, you know, that come with that, you know, and um and just, just all this different trauma building up, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, I was always smart in school. You know, I never got kept back in the grade, I always like was like in advance in school, but what happened when I left school, what I saw. You know, every day, my everyday life, I'm seeing, you know, people doing all these different things. So, of course, you're going to gravitate towards the wrong things. You know, growing up where I grew up at. What was the thing that pulled you into the fact of how you end up, end up going to prison? Man, like I said, just seeing what I saw and coming from the family that I come from. You know, my family, you know, they, they dealt with drugs and different things like that, just like everybody else. And we were misguided, bro. We, you know... Falling in lust with all the wrong things as it relates to the materialistic things, people saying your name, different things like that excited us. 
you know, and I saw it happening with other guys. So, you know, being a young guy, easily influenced, I saw it and I wanted it too. But Big but it, Buff, let me let me say this, man. Okay. I always had a problem with this, man. Okay. You know, we always, that old lady that seen us doing bad, you know, she'll say, he ain't nothing but a drug dealer, or he ain't this, or the, the community will look at right. you bad, but it wasn't nothing compared to the way the court system was gonna treat you. Right. And it, and, and, and it wasn't even right, because they was pushing these charges and these these certain uh, uh, crimes in our, in our way so we would stumble. Right. You understand that? Right. Right. So this was not, they don't, they make prisons for a reason. Right. And, and it ain't for their own kind. Right. And you got to understand that. So when you start seeing a lot of this stuff happening, you got to really take a real look, a panoramic right. look at what really going down. Right. And right. you'll see that this stuff is pretty much being directed in a way to where it can stumble or have you to hit the wall. Right. So, and when you hit it, it don't even have to be hard. They are gonna make it harder than what it was. Right. You know that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. See Definitely. what I'm saying? Definitely. So I always had a problem with that because I know that our people were misled by the news. Right. When they look at TV, black people are looked at in a certain way. Right. That's what they were strong on during right. that time too. Right. They'll watch on TV. So in their mind, the perception they seen when they seen New Orleans, or all that, when you seen the levy break mm -hmm. all that stuff it put us in a certain it gave us a certain look that mm -hmm. made up made us feel like you know what i'm right. saying it right. gave us a certain right. look that right. wasn't right man right the system was set up to hold us back that's it you know when you know we young and unconscious we don't know so that's why i stopped it because right. i know already you were going in on the fact but right. then i'm looking at the layers of how things are laid right. out right. too mm -hmm. right. right i want them to see the real like right right i just was giving you like the basic steps yeah you know when i was young and unconscious i didn't know but in prison, I went to reading. I started reading. There you go. I started reading. I started listening. I started paying attention to a lot of things. But then let's I, go back. I don't want you going to prison yet. I want to talk about you basically, even to get locked up. What did they get you for? I was charged with second degree murder. Second degree murder. Yes. What was it? Did they get you right or wrong? They had me wrong. Okay. So right. at the end of the day, was it something where they just picked you and said you was the one? Or was it something where you was in the vicinity? Or did they just was, charge you with the wrong charge? Yes, I was basically overcharged. Okay. It was a manslaughter because everything that happened was like in the heat of the moment. Of, but they charged me with the murder. That's what they used to do then, overcharge you. I had been to the parish like three different times for different, same kind of charges, three different times. You know, and it wasn't by coincidence. It just was set up like that. Matter of fact, um, after the second time that I got arrested, the homicide detective told me, look, you'll be back. We ain't gonna never take your picture now. You'll be back. Me, not really knowing what's going on, I'm really like, man, what is you talking about? Not really understanding what he actually mm -hmm. saying to me. Not understanding that. So I'm like, man, go ahead, man. You got me bad now. And guess what? I had came right back. So like I said, the system was set up to hold us back, but we don't know we're young and unconscious. We playing a game that we don't even understand the rules to. What? But I, go ahead. My question was, if this is a cycle that's been going on for generations, right? right? Mm -hmm. And as a kid, you've seen all the people who came out and like, man, you need to quit. Are you going to be in there just like, like me? Right. Why do we keep falling back into that same cycle? Because as a kid, you're easily encourageable. People may tell you, look, don't do this, don't do that. But what you're seeing is more prevalent than what people are telling you. Right. Right? Because, all right, they said that you you don't start to mature until you're 25 years old. I believe mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Because you're incorrigible when you were a kid. Like, people telling you one thing, but what you seeing every day? Who getting all the girls? Who getting all the money? Who getting all the things? I hear what you saying, but everything I'm seeing right here is telling me something different. And you right. see the risk. You see people dying. You see people right. in prison. You see all the risks that come with it. Right, but at a young age, you ain't even be able to comprehend it as you are when you get to be an adult. So when, when your mind mature, you start being responsible. You don't know many people that started it that just jumped off the porch. Right. Okay, you did 27 and a half years, but how right. much time did they give you actually? I was, I was sentenced to life. I was sentenced to die you in prison. You were sentenced to die in prison. To die in prison. How do you end up out? Oh man, man. <laughs> I went to prison and and, and man, I, all I can say, bro, is God bless me because I learned some things for real. I studied the law for real. I started studying the law for real, right? So then I went to kind of like understanding what's going on. So I went to like helping other people who were similar situated. 
So I used to always feel like, look, I'm versus the state of Louisiana as it relates to this legal thing, because I felt like, look, y'all took advantage of me when I knew what's going on, but now I know what's going on. Now and I ain't gonna let you do it to nobody else. Right. So every day in prison, that's how I lived. I lived to help people. I lived to make people's situation better because I was talking to the young people that was coming to the prison and I knew they didn't even understand the situation that they fell in right there, you know what I mean? So I was there to kind of be like, all right, look, let me try to give you some game. Let me show you just how wicked this stuff is for real. And they had other brothers kind of like blessing them with different kind of literature and stuff like that. What I was doing is blessing them with the legal aspect. I'm showing them, look, this how it go for real. These things that you need to know as it relates to your situation, how you wind up in the situation, how you could possibly get out of the situation. What was the worst case that you seen? I'm gonna get to you. Mm -hmm. What was the worst case that you seen that you helped a, a, a person that came into prison that was confined mm. and, and you seen that it wasn't done right and you was able to help them? Man, it was a lot of them. I want to hear the worst one. Man, I can't. I I don't have a, a one of the ones that stick out to you. Uh -oh. <laughs> all right. oh, all right, yeah, definitely. All right, I was on. I was at a trustee camp. Okay, right, which is Camp F, and they had a guy that I know. I'm gonna call him C. He um he had been down like like thirty years at the time, right? And he kept saying, "Man, I want you to look at my case, buff." I want you to look at my case. I want you to look at my case. I'm like, man, you've been in prison all this time. You just want somebody to look at your case. He said, but I done got all kind of people to look at my case, bro. But, man, they said they can't help me. So he go get his case. He was on a murder charge. Matter of fact, he didn't even did the murder. He ain't did the murder, come to find out. But at the time, he just really like, man, I'm just trying to see what's going on. So when I read his um, transcripts, I'm reading his transcripts, I'm like, hold up, bro. I see that they started your trial. And then in the middle of your child, they changed the charge to something else. And he's like, yeah, they did that. I'm like, they can't do that. I'm like, because the reason that they give you an indictment is to put you on top of what charge that they're going to charge you with for you can prepare defense. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can't change lanes once the trial starts. Right. Mm -hmm. The trial starts with Valdar, meaning when they pick the jury. They did it in Valdar. And I'm like, man, you ain't supposed to be here right now because of this issue right here. And he like, man, nobody ever told me this in 30 years. They kidnapped. I see that mean whoever you let look at your situation, they kind of like ain't knew what was going on, bro. Everybody who who professed to know don't mean they know for real. Right. And you know, and a lot of people just didn't or, or do turned the, eye to the research or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. So I was able to um, to help the brother out, man. And um, he was able to get out of the prison. Wow. Because um, of that. From the time uh, you talked to him to the time he got out, how long was it? Probably was about six months. Six months you got him out? That's quick. That's, God blessed him. I always say God blessed the brothers. He just used me to bless him. That's right. Six months you so was able to case, it out. So in that case, did he have to use his lawyer? You know, you brought information to him. Did he have to go to his lawyer? No, to get no, no, how no, does no, no, no. He had to go to court. Yeah, By himself, I'm just saying. Or yes, 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 yes. Oh, you can do that. Your pro se, they call it a pro oh, se. Okay. Rep. You do it yourself. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like a, um, what we call in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. It's like a post conviction. Wow. It's post conviction relief. Um, in a, in a pro, in a post conviction, you pro se. Right. You can actually get a lawyer, but you're not afforded a lawyer. You, you don't. Right. You know, you're not guaranteed a lawyer. Right. But if you can afford one, you can get one. Most people can't. In six months, you get this guy. Right. Did he get to come home? How old is he? You, you remember? Man. During this time, he was probably like 50, something. 50 yeah. something like that. He was he was probably like 50. Okay. Yeah. And this was, how long how, how long ago was that? Man, it was like in uh, 2010. Okay, I wonder yeah. if he's still alive. That was like a Is he still I don't know. Do you keep contact with these people? No, no, no. I, you know, now mm -hmm. that I'm home now, I run across a whole lot of guys that I was blessed to help. And every time they see me, whoever they with, they be like, this the dude right here. This the one that helped me or whatever like that. In prison, I never knew how much it really meant mm -hmm. until I came home. Not only did I help the guy, I affected families. Mm -hmm. You know, I brought families back together. You know, I see it now because I'm doing the same work now for the public defender's office. And I get a chance to really actually see it. I get a chance to see families reunite. In prison, I just took it for granted. It was just like, I'm doing what wow. I'm supposed to be doing. How many people can you think of? I know you probably don't know the exact number, but while you were in prison, how many people did you help? 
<laughs> it's impossible. I'm gonna answer that. No, I'm one of them. Literally, I can't. I can't. Like, up too. I can't. I'm one of them. I'm talking about it. Like Since under a hundred. Uh, like like over a hundred. Yeah, over a hundred. And how many years were you doing this for? Oh, I started. I, I was an MA counsel for like seventeen years. Seventeen. But years. I started working on my own case prior to being an MA counsel. So basically, when I got off the bus and they showed me how to use the law library, that's what I learned. All of us was in prison around the same time. So when they'll probably be going this way, I'll be going this way. Right. And I'll be like, look, y'all, come on. And at mm. first, I used to get mad because they didn't want to come. But oh, then yeah. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to learn it to be able to help my, my other brothers. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, it didn't matter to me that they didn't come no more. Now I'm going to get it, and I'm going to try to bring them a real in some kind of way. You know, just I just won't help. Let me cut him up just a little bit. How long was it? Did he did he help? Did he end up helping you as well? Man, that that he been helping me from day one. That's before the law even came in. Before he even studied the law, because he's out the area with my charge card. So he's just trying to make me understand what the law is about from the little piece he knew. But then when we got to the prison, while us being young, he was one of the only young guys that had it in him to attack law. Only, I'm talking about, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I go on for days. All us that went up to the prison in our generation, and it was only a few of them that was young that was able to Grass just literally go into the law library every day and dedicate themselves to that. Me, I didn't have it there in my head to even challenge that because of my situation. I was right. falsely accused, so my whole thing was like, man, they got me. They done set you, they got you. I'm coming, but not True, just running, keep running to the books. This too nice. So my dad, they really had me jammed in. So he would try to pull me all the time, all the time. Man, you need to get down here, get you down here. Go. My thing was pay for attorney. Every attorney I had, I had paid for attorneys from '94 all the way until 2019. How much money is that? I'm that two different lawyers. Every, I, know. I had to pay for attorneys. That's a lot I've of money. Now one of them got me out of jail. Now I want to find anything to help me get back into the courthouse. I got an attorney from New York. I didn't pay him one American dollar. I didn't pay him nothing. That man freed me within like 18 months. Wow. Exonerated me, not freed me. Exonerated me. I ain't paid him a dollar. I had an attorney that was actually assistant district attorney in Orleans Parish on my case. When she converted over, she's one of the worst attorneys there is. I'm gonna say this now, I'm gonna put myself on out down the land and say that this woman will literally rob you blind out your money. And what me saying this is her name is Julia Tizzer. I'm not defaming her because I can show you stats on every case she took in and go to prison at the same time. You took like seven, eight cases at one time. And it's impossible for you to juggle that many cases. At Is there time. a rule to say that you can't do that, She's though? She's hustling. No. She's been hustling from the beginning of the time, but they understand this in, 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 in the city. This is why we're doing the podcast. So this brother can deliver the narrative, the narrative of law to them, literally. Not in a form of school where they would run from it, but mm -hmm. he's going to give it to them where they can understand it. That has mm -hmm. to be a gift in that in yes, itself. Yes, yes. And right. he ain't charging right. them a penny for it. Right. That's exactly. the thing. He never did charge a penny. Wow. So this podcast we about to start is not about money. Educating. Yeah, it's real wow. talk. So you're going to teach you what you need to know before you go into the courthouse. Wow. You cannot be your attorney be, if you have an attorney on because of his job. He's actually employed by the public defender's office. So he can't speak to someone that's already represented by an attorney. What is, your, what is the name of the podcast coming? Streets to the Pen. Streets to the Pen. Streets to the right. Pen podcast. And it's going to be, be, it you, will be popping three? off this yes. month. You will see nothing but DOC guys being interviewed on that podcast randomly. We're not doing people outside. It's only dealing with formerly incarcerated and incarcerated guy. Period. I'm not trying to get caught into the internet world outside that. Now, people outside can tap in, ask questions, find out things of that nature. But what we're doing is all about the prison. For us, the inside and how the facility is being ran, I'm going to personally try to shut Angola down because of the violence that's going on inside the prison. Candy line. They have a, talk, a, a, a saying that's been stated in prison that goes along like with the sands of Las Vegas and things of that nature. What goes on in here stays in here. Mm. I'm about to flip that narrative. 
I'll bust that shit down by myself because the things that's going on in there, you never pull keep that to yourself. Right. Wow. Let me let me let me ask you a question, man. Like like when you first seen his case, um, what did you think? Before I even seen this case, when he when he when he came into Paris jail, by me, by me being from the area where the charge happened, I basically was like, man, ain't no way in the world you could have done it. that. You know it's impossible. So you already knew. Yeah, yeah, it was like impossible. Why? Now picture me meeting him after two weeks and sitting twenty eight and a half years Paris? with him knowing that. Man, I can't, I can't tell you how it actually happened. He can tell you more about that. He yeah. have told us, but that. I know yeah. you. When you seen him, you say, "Ain't no way." Why would you say, "Ain't no way"? Because, he done it because I know the distance. I know the distance from where it happened at to where he got arrested at, and I knew it was impossible for you to get from here to there. That's like all of us from downtown, five and a half right? miles, and all of us know downtown. We know how to, you know, how these things, how, how we can get from here to here, because we didn't been to these places so many different times. And, I, and the shortest route in my mind couldn't get you from here to there in the time that they were saying. I was like, how did, how did it go? How did that thing But wouldn't go? it be in court? They would have to prove that in order to... Not, not, if, you got a, not, sorry, really. not if you got a sorry lawyer. Not really, no. And, 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 and all right. Man, I'm not a lawyer. Like this. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not a lawyer, right? But I can tell you this. Most cases... They have, in Louisiana, they have direct evidence. They have circumstantial evidence. Right. So it's more like, all right, I'm going to throw it out there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Most of the guys that we were in jail with, they were arrested for first-degree murder, right? We knew it was a first-degree murder, but it was more like, all right, we're going to arrest you for first-degree murder. We might take you to trial for first-degree murder. But if you get found guilty on second-degree murder, we go I did that. what I was we trying to do. either way it goes. Mm. Wow. That's they were. What happened to the other guys that was with you? Oh, uh, well, both of them, they, they, they right now, they politicking hard. My Both of my co-defendants, Leroy Nelson, Arnell Jaloup, a.k.a. Sidney Hill, which is one of them, well, they, they politicking, bro, heavy. As far as the case is concerned, we're still dealing with civil issues. So they're in the city at, at all times, bro, basically selling merch, selling, you know, things, dealing with our case, and steady pushing it, bro, just trying to promote what, what, what. Wow. It's crazy, man. Wow, so, you know, I really, really look at, you know, you guys, man, and I think, man, that's a lot of time for you to do 28 and a half, 27 and a half. And we're about to talk to you, Chucky. We got to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for you, uh, Big Buff, to do 27 and a half years and then to be sitting here, you know, because a lot of people died during that process. And I know y'all seen that happen as well. Right. Some people that you knew was innocent that died before, you know, they could even get out. Right, right. And I think that's more where that's your name going down to say that you're guilty when you're really not. Right. And a family being looked upon a certain way because of that. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. So after a person die, there's no way you can clear his name? Nobody, everybody forgets about him. They forget. Yeah. Nobody, you know, he's not pushing his narrative no more. Nobody's really pushing a narrative no more. He's dead. But legally, can you actually clear a person's name after they're dead? I think you could. Yeah. I, I mean, think you let, could. Let me ask you this: How? Okay. And, and, and we don't. We're not gonna go into too much detail. But when you start talking about people that's dead, mm -hmm. do you think it's right? Because we've heard of a couple of people that are getting out because they're blaming people that have died mm -hmm. for the crime. You know, basically the crime that they was together on mm -hmm. when it happened, or around the vicinity together even if it did or didn't happen that way so that they can be released. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you agree with or is this something that you totally would not agree with? Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pass on that with that, bro. He pass on that. I'm gonna <laughs> like go I'm gonna answer that one one more time. And to show you that I meant what I said, I'm gonna say the same thing. Man, I understand. I understand. I, I, I can't sit here in front on guys that do that shit and say, I don't understand. But what I will tell you is this year, when I think about the whole thing and I think about the people's family and what could transpire after that, if I throw the charge on him, or if I throw the he throw the charge on me and I'm dead, you threw my family out there because somebody might want to retaliate on my family for their loss. 
You see what I'm saying? I get it. Nigga might kill my daughter. I kill his brother. Now I'm dead. And nigga smash my and just run through my family when you throw that you throw that charge on the guy and said, Well, that's who did it. Now he dead, cool. All right. And now you got to see his family pass in front of you all day. I get so it. You didn't throw them under the gun. Mm-hmm. I like it. I, I like the answer that you gave because that's serious. Yeah, that's, that's serious. serious. You playing with business, kids man. and everything. That, it's that's serious. Disrespectful. What I what, and I ask y'all this because um, and I'm gonna get to you because you you was just locked up with C murder, but I want to really understand how I hear rumors that C murder has an opportunity to say that Soldier Slim was the one that did the murder. Or that that killed the guy, the, the kid, and he could be released. I keep hearing this. A fact. But like I said, no, I'm saying, I keep hearing this, I mean, and, and it's, it's circulating in the streets. Everybody, I hear it all the time. And but some people saying, I know he didn't do it. He's a different type of guy. I mean, and why would he? I mean, he know that man, mama. I'm talking about he's close to the family. So it's why would I just lay up there, you know, and just disrespect that after all it? That woman went through, you know, I'm going to just sit here and say, yeah, well, Slim killed and, and you know what I'm saying? That, that demand, but if you know, he said it, they saying he could be released just for saying that. I mean, you see where he said that, he huh? He like that. So that lets you know how he, you know, he still he said that. like that. That shit been in the air forever. So that just speaks on a level of what type of guy that is. And that's not to discredit all you other guys that decide to do what you do. But but I'm hey, just, man, I respect that guy for making for making his right, yeah, making yeah. that decision. And and when you think about it, only what I'm saying, asking about it, is because like I said here lately, mm -hmm. it's been something that I've been hearing a lot. I, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Maybe you said it's already was something that was already circulating in there. Mm -hmm. Why have I just started hearing it more and more lately? Because I mean, the people actually see. If people gonna try to kill that guy. They're actually trying to stretch him out. Yeah. How many people do you need? tell you that that man didn't commit that crime. Right. For you to just hang on to little threads of somebody that's saying some shit and then they recant it. This shit is so sick, I'm, they got a female-ish. I'm sorry for putting y'all there, mom, but I gotta mess with this. You know what I do, streets to the pen. She was actually intertwined with his case, with see murder case. This female right now, I have, Shit on the phone. She professing to have a kid for me before I went to jail. Wow. She was supposed to be one of the witnesses against him. Mm. The shit turned, it flipped me out because I'm knowing I was dealing with her on the street. Even yeah. though me and homie didn't really rock in jail, him and my co defendant is real tight. Uh, me and homie just, you know, we hollering and keep it moving. But when I found out that she had something to do with the charge on call, she's like, you know, they was trying to make her say the dude did the shit. Mm. These people literally, she had a few checks, a few checks, she bust a few bad checks or whatever she was into. They were trying she to was, scare her. Yeah, she was in the spot that night in the, the club when it took place. And she, I mean, shit. She literally told them, dude, and then they clip told it, her. Tell you yes, stop doing yes, it. yes. You're going to say it. They had her jammed up and they was going to, you know, take care of a little issue or whatever she had for her to testify against, dude. So now, when, when I found out that she didn't testify, I'm kind of, but I never brought it to his attention. Hey, bro, I know, you know, because me and her wasn't on good terms for me to even tell him that, like, I could get something handled. Mm -hmm. But I did want to get in contact with her. And from her, bro, you know, same old shit. That dude didn't do that shit. And they was trying to make everybody say all of them was in the little room. They jammed them in. You know, a few strippers, a few of them brothers that were dancing. They closed them in. They didn't want to let them out. They brought them all in, and they went to interrogate them and tell them, yeah. Make him say that dude's name. That's real shit. Wow. And it sounds crazy, but I know it's I know shit like that happened because of my own charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's how. Before that, I wouldn't be able to believe it. I mean, if I was just a regular big citizen, buck. I'd be there trying you to help. Him. Mike, let me you know, hold on. Buck. Before he leaves, I want to ask you got big buck a question. Big buck. Got so big buck. big buck passed on his last question. You mind <laughs> watch him? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you have a brother that had passed away. Tell me about your little brother. Rest in peace, black Ooh. the guy. Yeah. Well, that one, Tell me big. what happened. He got killed. Here recently? No, that was like in 2013. What? You was locked up? Yeah, I was in prison. How did that affect you when you heard that? Man, that was a big blow. It's personal. This ain't for the yeah. TV. That's just talking. Yeah. Right, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that was a big blow there. You, uh, how, did you, how did you maintain? 
because I was used to maintaining, bro. You know, in, in prison, I was like the go-to guy for everybody, right? And um, I juggled, man, so many different things at one time. And I just added that to my my juggling because my family was grieving. So, you know, and and, 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 and and I ain't really had time to do no grieving. I had to make sure that my mama, my sister, and them, you know, my whole family, I had to make sure that they were straight because um, my little brother was the backbone of the family at the mm. time. He the only one out there. He the one, you know, taking care of business and, you know, whatever, right. you know. So when he when he got killed, man, it was crucial to the whole family. How old was he? Um, I think my little brother was 32, okay. 33, something like that when okay. he got killed. What did you know. hear in prison how he got killed? Well, I didn't actually... When, when he got killed, one of the, uh, a guy come woke me up. I was asleep. He come woke me up and was like, you know, when I saw him, he crying. I'm, I'm looking at him. He from out, you know, he out the project too. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at him. I'm like, man, what's up? He said, man, he killed him, bro. And I'm just like, who? I'm thinking one of his people got killed because he crying real tense. I'm like, who? And he said, your brother. I'm like, man. What was his name? Man. What was your brother's name? Merle. Merle. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, like, they killed Merle. And I'm like, the what? Man, I'm like, man, man, go don't you don't want to believe man. that. Yeah, and then when I went, when I, when I, when I, when I, went, call. When I went call, the person who answered the phone couldn't talk to me. I'm talking about everybody they passed the phone to. They didn't want to just tell like, mm-hmm. and I'm no, like, man, what's break. up? What's going on? What's up? What's holding up? Talk to such and such. Talk to such and such. And then one of my other nephews wound up getting the phone and was like, man, yeah, bro, oh my god, kill. I'm like, whoa. I ain't asked what happened, how it happened. I just was like, look, I'm going to call y'all back. And I had to process it, you know. And um, a lot of a lot of guys inside of the prison, man, I watch shots out to the brothers inside of the prison because we stick together for real. They was coming to see me in droves. Like, what's that, bro? You good? You good? You good? And I'm like, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So I just turned all my attention to my family. You know, and was like, what's up with y'all? You know, with y'all? You know, then every day I tried to call and talk to my mom and talk to them because I understood how, you know, how crucial it was for everybody. How it know? affected everybody. So, um, you know, I just turned my attention towards that. And, you know, and, and the things that I do now is dedicated to my brother and my cousin. My cousin was killed too. Rest in peace. Yeah, at the same Black. time. Yeah, yeah. Be right before my little brother, like two oh, years right before my little brother. Okay. Rest in peace, Shadow Black. And, um, and everything that I do now is in dedication to them. To show that, look, man, y'all ain't waste y'all lives for nothing. You know, y'all, you know, yeah, everything that y'all did, whatever y'all did on whatever level, I'm about to do it on this level right here to show y'all, look, look, in spite of that right there, this right here can come out of the same in the project, the same hood. We can do it just as good as much mm-hmm. as they think that we do bad. Mm-hmm. You did, know what I'm saying? Did they find your, the, the guy who killed your brother? No. Nobody did. Never was. Did they even look for it? They said they did. I don't know. I, you know, I'm like, all right. Okay, but 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 being locked up. Let's be real. Right. The streets talk, but there's a code that's in the prison where you hear stuff. Right. You didn't hear nothing about your brother's killers. I heard all kind of different stuff, so I ain't never know what to believe. Okay. You know, it was like this and that and this and that. So I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Too confusing. Because I'm really more like, you know, all right, it happened, and I ain't, I ain't trying to advocate for nobody to go to prison. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand how it go for real. Because you never you know, know who they picking, and right. they just picking right. whoever. Right. You're seeing so many people getting picked wrong. Right. You don't know if they just going to get somebody right. throw them in there. I'm doing this stuff every day. I'm reading these cases every day. You know, I'm reading this stuff, you know, and I, and I know, like, innocent guys sitting right there with me. They sitting right there with me. So many people. So when you go to hearing this, that, and 54, you be like, yeah. That's nothing. That's when you know you don't really know. But if that guy knew did it, who done I, what? I probably almost put my head on it. He still wouldn't want it. He wouldn't give a fuck. He wouldn't want him in jail. Wow. It could literally wow. be the dude. I'll put my head out there. Let me ask What's you something. What's the most... I want to ask my soldiers. Hold on, let me ask this question. Okay. What's the most common wrong that always popping up that you see all the time in cases? Misidentification. Yeah. So many people are, man, so many people are misidentified. So many people are misidentified because of all kind of different other influences on their mind. You know, man, it was so many situations to where... Well, well, a guy, they're, they're charging a guy with a crime, right? 
And then they might have another guy in prison that's kind of like maybe from around that area. Maybe was out there when it happened. And they'd be like, well, how did he get you for this crime? And he's saying, no, such and such said it was me. And, and the guy might be like, I was out there. But you call it misidentification. I know that it's just a lot of time uh, cases where they're trying to get... Uh, they trying to get, you know, they want want to get the prosecutors want to get that case well, right, conviction, and right. they want the conviction. Right. Exactly. And they don't, right. they don't care, so they trying to figure out ways to, because right. their next step is judge. Right. Mm-hmm. Just and like they, Mac. They, yeah. Just like right. Mac, because they said the guy had stepped forward saying that I did it, but they still wouldn't let him because they do want the that time, because they want mm-hmm. that. The right. reason I call it misidentification, because I know people who actually was like, yeah, that was him. I saw him, but it really wasn't him for real. Mm. You know, I know people. I know cases like that. You know, yeah, like yeah, like, like when the DA, yeah. DNA might come up. Like like mm-hmm. people identify people. Right? It was him. He done it. Then the DNA come up. And it's somebody and they said, else. It wasn't him. I'm telling y'all what I saw. DNA don't lie. Prime example of what they do. Uh, That's why I call them witness identification. This is how witnesses can be bamboozled and coached so easily, and they like to use this scenario dealing with law with cases. You see me sitting here with a gun. Y'all know I'm the only one sitting here with a gun. Lights blank out. Boom. Boom. Y'all hear the shot. Light come back on. I still got the gun. He did. Who did the shoot? You. You. He did it. Now, how you going to deny that? The lights was out. Yeah. You didn't see shit. You seen me with a gun in my hand. Lights went out. You heard a shot. Lights came back out. You still seen me with a gun in my hand. He was dead. It's called a reasonable doubt. Yeah, that's enough. They Cir- gonna make that's circumstantial law. Right. Circumstantial evidence. That's right. the law. That's it. It is fine. That's right. You can't get yeah, mad. they make you believe it. You can't. The district attorney, the judge, they're not supposed to put their feelings in the case. Right. And they be like, "Oh, this motherfucker just got away," and then they'll throw a whole nother loop to make that shit work. Because at that point, what they're gonna look at, look at all your background. You are the one on the streets and drugs. He's a good guy. You know, it couldn't have been him. It had to be you. Even though it was him, they're going to paint it on you. Well, what they say about me? I was a kid, juvenile. I mean, what the? I was a kid. You sent all three of us. All three of us was kids. You sent us to the prison. Gave us life sentences for something. The head district attorney said it was the same thing he just did. It was impossible. He right. said we didn't do it. The head district attorney said it was impossible. Now, how you got... Ranking officers from the bottom to the top, making it possible. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, did you ever do time with Soldier Slim? Yes. What was that like? I always do my Soldier Slim story. I gotta do it. Oh man, Slim was one time with Slim. We had we had a good we had a uh, we had a good time with Slim. Slim was on the tip with us. Okay. And, uh, was this the was time when was this the same me. time was I told you about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slim was Slim was okay, give me that. I want to hear the truth because I had a, I had a lot of riffraff about this. this Kunta said last time on my show that he he coerced Soldier Slim mm-hmm. to rap, mm-hmm. and people didn't like that. People, mm-hmm. were, certain people, mm-hmm. certain people spoke out against that. So I want to hear what you say happened that day because you was there. Okay. No, I want to hear I just want you one thing before we jump. Okay. <coughs> First thing, I would like to ask anybody, because that situation, period. I love, that, I love that cat. When they heard me say that cat, you know, you hear this gangster shit, or you hear that, and you hear that. I said, man, a dude is a good dude. See, when you hear somebody put the good stamp on some dudes, and dudes have a jacket for doing other things, they feel like you insulted him, or you took away from the thing. At the end of the day, you just heard what he taught. He described Slim to you. Yeah. You just asked him. Yeah. Which and he, t- good dude. That don't mean he ain't about his shit. Yeah. That don't mean he ain't gangster. That's at the end of the day, he's a human being. That's real. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, the, the rest of these suckers that's trying to speak for that guy, hold it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So th- th- that day. Kunta told me that he coerced him, and I, I I heard the story. I put it out. What happened? Did he want to rap, or what was it like when he came to jail? It, it was more like it was more like this year. Like everybody loved Slim, right? So we hear Slim like you know doing all kind of different raps. You know, of course we want to hear Slim, right? We want to hear Slim get out. So it was more like. <clears throat> 
we was like, man, Slim, you know, like you keep on, you know, Slim, man, where you gonna get down? Slim, we you you know every day we was we was on that nigga neck. We on him cause we <laughs> on him. Y'all wanna hear that music? And you know, Slim, he like, eh, I ain't really no. Come on, come know. on, come on, up, Chucky. Yeah, come up, sit right there. Slim, more like you know, I ain't really no. Bop, boom, you got to get that out of there. I got it out. Okay. You heard so, me? So, Slim, more like man, I ain't got. T- come on, Slim, bro. Come on, bro. You know. Basically, uh, you see him, y'all want him to rap, y'all trying to get him to go in. Every day. But he don't want to do it. Okay. How long did that go on? Man, if we took this thing about a week or so, man. <laughs> you Chuck, no, was in there too. He was in there too. Bro, he was in there too. 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 I went to middle school. Right I went to middle school with him. I'm real childhood partners put, put with him. Put his seat up. I'm real childhood partners with him. Y'all know him as Soldier. We know him as Magnolia Slim. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right, right. But. That's what he is. He a soldier. He like me and him. He like he like Conta. Yeah, he, he a soldier. Ten toes down, you know. But like he said, dudes wanted to hear this Magnolia Slim on the tip, man. He's a legend, a local legend. So y'all both was like, we got right. to hear this. You right. got to, you, you, but you about to go home. You ain't gonna sit sixty days. You know we got the sixty day rules. Ain't nobody, you know they don't pick the charges up. You know we out of here. You about to go home. They ain't got nothing on you, man. We need a concert on this tip, man. Oh, on that type of level, nigga, not like you know. Kunta made him about to beat him up and make him rap or nothing. No, we need to hear you, man. You, you make know your yeah, yeah, before you go home, we need you rapping on this deal. We need a concert. You tripping. And then they had three more dudes out the city, out the night. Well, what their name is? Graveyard Soldiers. Graveyard Soldiers. So we needed a concert on the tip. Y'all saying y'all can mess with soldiers? Y'all, y'all can mess with Magnolia Slim? Slim, they got three dudes over here to grade, grade y'all soldiers. Oh, and he cranked it. That's how that went. Yeah. Wow. That's how that went. He so, went, so, you know, so Slim I, gave I, us but, that. But yeah, still, right. so, okay, so we, we, Kunta finally was able to say, hey, man. Right, Slim in front of the cell. I'm in the cell with him. Slim like, man, you got the rap, baby. You got to well, give us something. And then Kunta said. Yeah, he in front of the cell. I'm in the cell with him. You got the rap. You got to give us something, baby, before you go home. You about and to go home. And what did he say? Man, you know I don't like, look. If Slim wasn't a rapper, he'd have been a comedian, man. Yeah. I know him for real. Yeah, if he wasn't yeah. a rapper, so, yeah, that, yeah, see, if he was in his room right now, you have all that's laughing right now, man. That's who Slim is. Wow. That's so, who he is. So in, in that day when he rapped, uh, well, how long did he, he rap he for? He cut up. He see, cut every up. local hit he ever they had, cut he, he cut up. He cut oh, up. He, did, he did everything. Yeah, he cut right. Made the other dudes that thing. rap yeah, they, don't even want rap. Yeah, they had, they had kind of like gracefully bought out. He shut that. He yeah. shut that. After Kunta had talked to him. So Kunta, when he came to your cell, he said, hey, man, come on, man. You got to give us something. You got to do something. Yeah. You've been quiet since you've been on the ticket. Yeah. You might know and that was the first time Kunta really just spoke to right. him about it. But he been knowing him, too. Like, I know him. He been knowing but him, But that too. day, what made it different? What, uh, Kunta had never he about to go. He about to go home. He about to go. Yeah, like, we, you know, go like, we, like I said, we've been sweating him hard all, already. <laughs> you know, every time I talk to him, like, son, come on, bro. Come on, man. Don't <laughs> get on with that, bro. <laughs> man, come on, bro. Yeah, a few, like, you know, just a few balls. Or gotcha. whatever, like that. Man, I don't be really, you know. Slim, with that, bro? You know how to do all that, bro. <laughs> he, he really like us. He just yeah, not yeah, a real street nigga, oh, for real. Street so, yeah, you know, you know, you know how, 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 how it was then. Was different than what it is now. now. You know, because, you know, if you're a real street nigga, you don't really want to be a rapper, no too. No rapper and all that. So, you know, it's like, you know, no I, I can't rap, but I ain't really no rapper. Don't right. be pulling up on me. That's talking the type about of time home, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, Kunta and him, <laughs> you, I know you know, you said Kunta was a soldier and, and Slim Still was a soldier. Right. You know, like, during this time, though, these two young soldiers, <laughs> two young bulls. Right, right, right. You know, right. And, and, and it was a mutual respect. Right, right. It was all love. All yeah. love. You know, wow. you know Slim all come down there, you know. Tell our hat to him because he was a stand up guy for See, real. See, when Slim went home, when, when, when Magnolia Slim went home, he put his name in the rap. He put his fault. He did. Name he, in put, the rap. he put their name yeah, in the rap. He put food dude's name in the rap because right. he messed with them dudes. Right, Chuck, right. He got right. that angle. When he come up there, what he come doing? When he got that, come up to Cam J, look, he, looking for us. Right. He looking for us. He's a stand up guy for real. You know what? During that time, in that in that parish right there, during that time, you had to be a stand-up guy in care who you two. was or where you was from. Wow. If you had 11, you had to be 11 too. Yeah, you had to, you know, and he was a stand-up right. guy. Let me, let me, let me go this in. This guy right here, I ain't giving him no props, trying to prop him up too much. Listen, he's a legend. They got a titty called B1 in OPP, at Old Parish Prison. B1, cool. get all out of tears. You're going to hear his name right here, Kunta Gable. Wow. Right there. I want to hear about, like, you and you say Soldier Slim was your celly. Y'all was in the same cell together. Right, me, well, him, Tank, and a uh, dude they called Wimpy. Four right. was in the cell. Four in the cell. That's right. When, when, they, when he came in, y'all had already been there. Been knowing him. But y'all had already been in Locked Up. Yeah, we was there before him. He came in, we was already there. 
What was his energy like? And what was the conversation? Give me some conversation. Well, you know, when he seen us, man, you know, he know me from the streets. Was that baby love? You know. Wow. What what, what 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 sticks out that he said to you during that time when when that because it was a long time ago. But what sticks out like some think back that charge that he they had him on they had him on a murder and attempt murder. Okay. And it was him and the a fall partner. Fall partner was across from you, which was a cell three, right? Yeah. On the left, I was a cell two on the left. His fall partner was a cell three on the left. He was kind of leery of his fall partner because he didn't know how, you know. Yeah. Well, he ain't did the charge. He, yeah. You know, he told us out the gate, man. I ain't did any of my work, you know. But he was leery of his fall partner, you know. Wow. He didn't know how that was gonna turn out. But, but it, as time went on, you know. Yeah, he, you know, it worked out. You know, it worked, worked out, out better feet, for him. You know, yeah. So, so what? During time with with him, what, he never had no issues with nobody because he was soldier slim. Soldier, he ain't gonna have, he gonna, he ain't gonna have, he ain't gonna do too much rapping left guys like us. Try. Come on, soldier, baby, you gotta give us something. Yeah, you know, but he's gonna have you laughing all day on the tip, man. <laughs> he's gonna have you like I said, if he wasn't a rapper, he'd have been a comedian. He's a clown. Wow. So how long would you say y'all was locked up in cellars together? Uh, what was thinking about fifty days? Oh, fifty right. days, right? At, you know, because during that time, days, right. you'll do like sixty, 60 days, and if they don't accept your charges, go home. You, you go, go home. home. Like 50, nah, yeah. fifty, fifty, yeah. something like yeah, that. Nah. Yeah, wow. and he, yeah, he was on a murder and attempt. Wow. So when when you when you look back just at the time, and I want to get back, get really go back into your backstory before we get to like what you ended, you end up going to prison. Right. How old was you when you went? When I come to jail, I was fifteen. You were fifteen. Fifteen yeah. years old. Damn, they get y'all young down there. Man, right? look. And he lied on me. Man, look. I they got that juvie? Man, man, look. He lied How did you, when you seen listen, him at 15? Listen, listen. <laughs> I look, I come out my cell, and I see him in a cell. I, I had to do a double take. I'm walking past, I come back. I'm like, man, how are you in? <laughs> Nigga, what, what you worry about that for? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the Chuck. That's what I was telling you about. I said, well, all right. That's all right. Yeah. You told him that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all that shit in there. Because he don't give me a little bit. He don't even know. Yeah, I'm like, it's, I'm like, who? How did, who the brother this shit? How you get in here? <laughs> he's going off. Do, 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 do. I'm like, thanks for that. Yo, that nigga, yo, yo, man. Little. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was, yeah, he was, yeah, he was, four ten, he was real strong. 100 pounds, 90 right. pounds, wow. 10, 90 right. pounds. Don't miss this, because a lot of people miss the narrative. They'll go to look. He's from Uptown. Mid City, baby. Mid City. Still, you can it, call it's that the that third wall, though. It's the third wall, but it just ain't Uptown, because you got to cross the bridge to be from Uptown. But it's the third wall, but I'm from Mid City before you cross the bridge. What the hell? In between they, downtown you, and uptown. Let's go back to being fifteen. I got to get get to why would you end up being <laughs> targeted at fifteen and thrown into pr jail and then prison? Police, <laughs> the police that uh, I forget the guy name, but we call him Shorty on the streets. He had some personal against me. It had to be you, you know, fifteen. I that's what was the charge was all about. The charges I was on, it was personal. It made me think of that movie that Denzel was in. I know it tripped you out, you know, where it, this, he was a boxer and they kept this, this one guy yeah, yeah. just yeah. did not like him. It was right. like that. Hurricane. Just like that. Exactly. Person. I don't know what it was. You know, I, know, I don't even know the guy. He's a grown man. I'm 15 years old. How you see? He slept with his girl. Right. I'm a you grown, you're a grown man I said you probably 15. slept with his girl. He's 15, though. You know? So? 15 year olds so, are bad. But at the end of the we're day. Women. What, <laughs> we're women. We're women. What happened? Like, like did, when did you first see him? Well, he been harassing me, you know, pulling me over, put me on pulling the car. Pulling you over? Yeah. You ain't got no car at 15? Pulling me on the car, but this one got him on my trail. He pulled me over one time, and I had like $1,500 in my pocket. And it was Was you walking or I driving? Was, I was shopping. I was walking, just getting off just the bus, coming from shopping. And he been on my trail ever since. He felt like I was a drug dealer. Yeah, because how a 15-year-old has that much $1, money. $1,500 in my pocket, right. you know? And so after that, he kept messing It was with over you. with, on my trail. Mm. And I ended up with a temp murder and armed robbery charge because of him. Mm. He started when he when he run up on you. He he just trumping charges pretty right. much. But I started off with a temp murder charge that another bogus charge that I said look about forty fifty days like to see the sixty day rule. Nobody come to court. They don't have nothing on you. Throw it out. When they throw that charge out, I had another temp murder and another armed robbery that they stuck on me that I done the twenty seven and a half behind. Wow. So. When you when you get this time, you fifteen. You, where's your mother? Where's your daddy? What's going All on? All of them was there. My right? daddy was in prison. My mother was there the whole step. I'm talking about every step of the way, every second. 
till March 1st, 2023, when I come home on her birthday. Mm. She was there the whole time. So she knew everything, you know. She was with me, you know. And, uh, you know, basically, he just lied on me, you know. I had old, my co-defendant, he tried to take the charge from day one. But they wait 23 years later for him to take his word in. That's how I come as I'm here right now. Wow, they wait yeah. 23 yeah. years to, to take, take his, his word. word. Yeah. They didn't take it 23 they take years ago. They didn't want to hear it then. Because they made the victim, I was on attempt murder and on robbery, but they made the victim lie. Mm. Wow. Right. And you got two witnesses, a, a 911 caller and an eyewitness. See, I had nothing to do with nothing. That's how I'm standing right here with this interview right now. Wow. Did, how was it doing time on something that you didn't even do? It you was know? Crazy. Yeah, you it must have been crazy. angry. It was crazy. I wasn't. It was. Yeah, I he was, was young. Yeah, he grew up in the system, though. Been angry. I really, I really right? didn't understand that's what I was going through at the time. Oh, that's okay. right, because he you was know? young, so he didn't really think about so it. So he thought you coming level. home. You right. said 25. I heard you yes. loud and clear. Yes. If it's 25, he got to get 10 years to even get to right. that. That's so right. he's really institutionalized as a child right. going up into the state of 25 in order to even start. Maturity. And to tell you the truth, my charges wasn't even my fight at that time. I was 15 years old, 90 pounds, 4'11". My fight was surviving in the, where I was at. Wow. Like them, they knew how small yeah. I was. And, but, you know, I'm 10 toes. I'm a man, but it just, you know. You was a kid. Right. You know, and I'm in here with adults. I'm talking what, was, about, there, was there any time where, where people try to play you uh, uh, wrong? Many a time, you know, yeah, I step up every time, every time. Every time. That's, yeah. That was nothing. The physical part of it was nothing. It was more mental to me. Yeah. So at 15, you know? that wasn't a juvenile um, facility? That was prison that you no, went was into? Real, I was in, I was in the past. They tried him as an adult. As an adult. They, they tried me as an adult, but they put me on the tier with guys right. that's older yeah, than me. Yeah, well, but you had a guy like Kunta there that right. was stand-up guys. Yeah, that see, was. That's the whole thing that they do. When they can't get you right on the street, and if they feel like, you one of the ones that's out there in them certain neighborhoods doing things. They literally are send you to jail. Knowing you're going to come out, but they'll send you to all these parents just for somebody to rape you, turn you out, that's or right. break you. They know you're going to beat the charges. I just need to send you in there so you can see them monsters. I ain't got to worry about you no more. And I tip your whole rest of your neighborhood when they see they done crack you. That's right. And so they always fish for the stand-up guys in these neighborhoods. Whether they did something or not, just because the name is in the neighborhood, from mm -hmm. the neighborhood down, I got to break you because you're bigger than the cops out here. Right. The people in the street respect you more than they respect us. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to take y'all hometown hero, I'm going to put him in jail, and he better be everybody he was on the street. Because if he not, when he get in that cage, it's that's when they with. all fold. That's right. When they ain't got that knife, they ain't got that gun, they ain't got them 15 niggas in the crew that they run with and Every F they tell you, me and my boys, I remember when me and my boys. Right. You gotta walk in that motherfucker by yourself. Wow. By yourself. How was it like, how, when you look and, and you you heard the stories on Kunta and just meeting Kunta, did you know Kunta? I know him from the street. So yeah. when you, what did you think when you seen, like, hey, that's the. See, man, man, Slim, they called him Slim. That's his other name. They called him Slimmy Fat. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a little something. He had the fourth wall, out the third wall. It was like inherited beef. Mm -hmm. We ain't had nothing personal. You know, the fourth wall always beef with the third wall. So, as we came up for our time, it was our time at that time, so we bumped heads a little bit. So, when you, you know, seen him, you was like, damn, I don't even rock with him. Right, we, we, we was like, we wasn't enemies, personal enemies, but we was like, you know, inherited beef enemies. So, when reach, I come on... They couldn't reach that point because of his sister. His right. sister was going to always literally keep that shit from going too far with me and him. <clears throat> now, if I'd have caught him out of pocket, God forgive me, but I probably would have done him something. Right. If he'd have caught me out of pocket, he'd have done me something. We know. We done been in enough situations where some shit done transpired where we know. Catch it, nigga. I got something for you ass. Right. But he had to make sure that certain people out my neighborhood didn't find out that he was the one who did it. And then I had to make sure I didn't, you know, his sister, you know, I, I couldn't look her in her face no more. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. be, gonna add up, but I'm not going to let this brother take me out either. <laughs> But uh, let me look. Let, I come on the tail when I first come on the tail with him. Sister, first day, he come on the tail. Big old cone. He looking like he look right now. Big old. I got dude. you now. I'm, I, look at this thing. First thing he said, "Oh, I got you now." I got you now. I got you now. Know what I said? Come on with it. Come on with it. Come on with it, big boy. Yeah. So when did y'all get close? Like when we got close? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, we always knew each other, but when he came in the prison. 
when he uh, came to the parish with George, I was already in. He was already in. He fell on a chair. And that was that was me just licking my chop. I wasn't gonna do him nothing anyway. Right. I just mm -hmm. wanted, yeah, I got you. See, you know you don't stand a chance right now. Right. Not with that. Not with them 90 pounds. <laughs> now I'm about to make your neighborhood feel it because his neighborhood is right outside the door to your house. Right. That right whole, down the street. His whole mm. neighborhood covered all these parish. That's his wow. neighborhood. So I wanted to make them hear that. I got it now. He in here with me. And hey, you young at the time. His sister came visiting. How, how old started. was you at the 17. time? 17. 17. I was 17. He was 15. 15. Yeah, I yeah. know. I know his he was on his neck. came visiting him, and when she came visiting him, I told him, and I said, Melissa, <laughs> I said, he fucked up. I got him. She said, if you fuck with my brother, I'm going to right now. You ain't messing with him. She cheated up. Man. She cheated up. Man. Man. She cheated up. So, I've been saving him since he's been alive. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just... Let's talk about uh, you was locked up with uh, C Murder. Right, just left him. Just, just left, left him. him. Just left him. But well, how is C Murder's? Uh, that's my that's my boy. Mentally, how is he doing? Mentally, C Murder straight. See how you see us functioning right now? He's straight. Never he's straight. broken. He's straight because he know he's innocent and he know he coming home. He know he got a bunch of dudes like this out here and more people fighting for him. So he know everything positive. I'm talking so about he ain't stressing really, everything positive. In actuality, you saying that he still got faith. Yeah, yeah. Whole, I'm talking about this to you the see what universe. I'm saying? Definitely. It's to the universe. His faith is to the universe. He know he coming home. Seeing too many people come out. That's right. He know he coming home. Sin, it's going that's right. That's 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 love, man. That's right. love. Like so, how? Okay, you you. How long were you locked up with Seymour? How many uh, years? Seymour was Seymour to come to the can when he come to the pen. About, about 12 or 13 or something. No, he come before that. Yeah. Oh, oh, when he come oh. around us, because he was playing football like around, what, about, about 10 or something? 9 or something? I don't know. He I, don't know. Came I, don't, I just remember you yeah, came. I can't 10, remember exactly what well, yeah. I, I don't know. He showed on 10. He I was on 10. I won't say 9 or 10. I was playing basketball. So right. about 13 years. Right. Yeah. So you and him were locked up for 13 years together. <laughs> and, and you know, from people coming to see me, Monica, uh, the grandma used to I come see him. I've been there a few times in a visit here with him and Monica. Monica with him and Monica. Him. Monica yeah. come see him, you be in One there. One time in Hunt, since when we was in Hunt. Uh, you was in Hunt with him too. I left Angola and went to Hunt. In 2022 in March, I left Angola and went to Hunt. And he was up there in Hunt. And mm -hmm. I would fail that visit with him and, and Monica come saw him. Wow. They, yeah. and, and it's crazy because they would check her to go in and come in. They have to check her. She have to go through a lot she just to come that. see him. She a soldier. What too. I want to shout out to Monica. She a soldier. What, what do they have to go through to That's come in? Because I know y'all know. It's disrespectful, bro. They do anything they can. Them now and disrespecting so the women like that. Make your family man. not come see you. Trying to, try to really discourage people discourage to come visit you. Back. That's the whole thing when visit days is, is up for, yeah, for them to come search you. To make them Different. be discouraged yeah, for not to come next week. Wow, so, just really but then, and when the woman, uh, when the woman tell you men that this is what they had to go through, that just makes you even more angry against right. the yeah, not she, wanting the her guards. Come, right, but right, 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 right. She right, knows right. she got to hold you down. You know, she, your, you know, she your woman or whatever, right. and she won't be there for you. Oh my God, kids, she won't bring your kids and everything. They violate. So they gonna go through that. They violate. No, but you own. see the they same guard that did this right. to her. But they're not gonna tell you that because some of if they're they know you. Who? They don't want they you again. Because they know you're going to do something. Right, they don't want you, you to. I, I, I don't care how much time I got. If how? you tell my mama, tell me a security guard touch, touch, inappropriately, it's over with. Now, that's another life sentence. That's right. It's I don't over care with. what the people say. That's real. I catch that right then and there. So in you, that, in the visiting shit. So your family everybody. not going to say Sergeant so Miller, the one that searched me down and, and like he touched my cat. Yeah, it's, it's just not, you know. You, know, you might just say a sergeant like he, you know, I don't like this, this sergeant, you know. They ain't going to never say no name because they know what type of dude we is. If we ever run around that sergeant. It's, it's gang it's, time. No matter, wow. you know, no telling so, how it's going to turn so out. So you being in there, did you ever have females come see you? Yeah. Okay, um... Did you ever hear any stories of anything? They always come through like, only reason I'm doing this is because of you. They wouldn't tell them you why, people, but they'll tell you. Them people are disrespectful they at the front them, gate. Bro. Only reason I'm coming up here is because of you. So you can only imagine what Monica have to go through. That's right. That's why I said she's a soldier. She, and she a... Uh, and she a celebrity, so right. they know that. They, so they gonna make it hard for her regardless, you know, just because who she is. Exactly. You know, not for her to come see, see murder. Come see Snow, yeah. you know? But she's still coming through that thing. Fuck what y'all talking about. Coming I love her. I ain't trying to hear right. that. She G'd up, sold you down, dog. That wow. woman right there. 
Wow. Jeet up soldier now. Ain't wow. no celebrity, uh, a person of her stand is gonna be going through that. Ain't got to go through that, you know? But she going through it for that dude. Wow. You know, and, for and whatever they share, you know? Yeah, it, 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 it got interesting, you know, like even, even from for P, I remember they was having, cause you gonna have a problem when you family, you know what I mean? And P, I remember him saying something to the fact of grandma before she passed, my, she would always come see C. And he said that, and I really, it didn't register to me, but now that I hear y'all talking, I think back to that and say, I understand why he was saying that, because he had been down there too, and he know what it is to get to have right. to go through there and visit. Right. And yeah. civilians going right. in to see somebody who's locked up and incarcerated. Right. But a male shouldn't feel that way. For a guy yeah. no. of his status, no, 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 no. for a guy of his status to still be locked in that prison, it takes a lot from a lot of guys that's in there, especially with him being innocent. Guys knowing that, man, you actually got access to, you know what I'm saying? And they can't get you out on it. So you just imagine with somebody who ain't got no support, fighting 20, 30 years, all right. the people done died. Man, this man can't get out with the support he got. But his brother damn near big. We don't oh, worry about what he got. He could be flat out broke just off his name alone. A right. lawyer got me out. You know what I'm right. saying? I ain't, I ain't paid one of them down. It's just about who you know. And for them to still have that guy sitting in there after all this time, but that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. And me and C. Murray, let me tell you this here before you ask that question. We created a bind. We was cool in Angola, but when I got the hunt, we was in a dome right by each other. Yeah, yeah, I heard team. about that dome. You know, so we got like kind of jammed right there. Listen, and, and he like how he is with me right now. I let him see with that type of relationship. I, me and him share a relationship. That's how me and C. is now from living in that dome together in, in Hunt's facility. Listen. I heard about the, the dome. world. I'm talking about the world, camera. Y'all roll it, huh? When, brother, I, when brother, I had Mac on. Brother ain't do that, y'all. But when I had Mac on, Mac said that, that they figured it out, the gang stuff in Hunt. I think that's what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. He's saying that they just put all y'all in a dorm together. They don't worry about no gangs. Yeah, they don't worry about that. Ain't no, ain't no gang. Ain't no gang. You, you got to get it out of your lip. Well, now. First of all, with them, them people in, in, in this deal and DOC inside, man, look here. You was in their head. You in there to die. That's I don't right. Care how you die. Right. Oh. Period. That's right. Whether another inmate do it to you, whether something that's why I told you about that, what goes in on prison, stays in prison. That shit is dead. You're killing that trend I, I right there. Kill that. Literally. Right. Well, kill it. It, it got to die, bro, because they got so many guys. They got. I, I hate to put this out there, but I lost so many friends with the the, the, the epidemic with the uh. Mm -hmm. that. That's right. Baby Man, I'm talking about literally, bro. I'm Corn bread. I'm gonna get y'all to switch because he's doing all the talking. And like a switch two, with him. I'm sorry, bro. But by no, 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 no. I want to hear. Spam. I want him to hear that mic because I must have lost about. Because you ain't got quiet on me because I, I shut him down with these questions already. <laughs> oh yeah, he about to take you that legal work. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gonna go with that paperwork. Oh, yeah. Johnny Cochran for real. I'm talking oh, about he Johnny <laughs> for real. Not <laughs> really. Now we gonna get it too. This is all good. But but my thing is, you know, for you like 15. It's something extraordinary to hear that you, no, you, can, you can at 15, that. yeah, at 15 years old, had to go through that, bro, and you still here to talk about it? Man, that's crazy to me, bro. Canazero, dummy, I wanna put that on camera, camera too. Mm -hmm. Leon Canazero, he gave me 50 years on attempted murder and 99 years on the armed robbery. First offender, never been convicted. Randy Wild left me with 149 years. Take that. Say that again, I wanna hear that, that one more time. Leon Canazero, Section G, Orleans Parish, mm -hmm. gave me 50 years as a 15 year old on attempted murder, 99 years on the armed robbery on the same one person. Ran it wild, never been convicted, my first conviction, 15 years old, remember my age. Tried as an adult, gave me 50, 99. Ran it wild, left me with 149 years. That means life in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You're gonna die. Life in. Whatever jail you in, whatever mm -hmm. DOC in, you're gonna die right there. But unless we feel sorry for you and let you out. 15 wow. years old. That's and true. I was innocent. That's the cold blood. But I was wondering when you were gonna get to that. And <laughs> I was innocent. Forced to take a deal. That's right. To come on. Knowing you're gonna get tired. Same thing they tried to hit me with. And don't know where I got it from. Probably, I'm gonna take that back. My mom, my mother passed right before I came out. Mm -hmm. She passed, there was no way in the world I was taking a deal. There's nothing, I mean, I had my daughter and family, but you took you took mine, you took everything. Man, ain't no cow out. I need that bag now. 
Now, see when you just three weeks you, later, they cut me loose, but they he were just talking about I don't know where I come out if I take this deal. Turn it out three weeks later. Hmm. All the while they were just trying to see if they could get me to be stupid, knowing that I'm innocent, knowing that they done found everything they exonerate me, exonerate me. Oh, we got a deal for what you mean a deal? Why That's would right. you play the game like that? Why why are you playing games? They bluffing you. The flip side. That's a bluff. They trying right. to bluff yeah, exactly. you. Exactly. Check the flip You're not side. Not to bluff with the law. See what he said. His lies. situation. Vice versa with me. They try to make him take the deal. Now my mama just had a heart attack. The lady that been there day one, 1995, mm -hmm. all the way to 2023, March first when I come home. Just had a heart attack and a stroke. This what they do me. I'm innocent. Wow. Listen, we got a deal for you. Now my mama just she's still in the hospital. We don't know how this is gonna turn out. It's my baby. It's my soldier. That's what they're using because right. they know that they know you want to go home. They know you want to go home. They know I won't go home. Listen, we know you ain't done it, but we ain't got the money out of Louisiana. We broke. We can't pay nobody else that got designer rated. Mm -hmm. See, they got to pay this guy right here. They pay Jerome Morgan. They pay such and such and Joe Blow them. They know I'm innocent. They told my lawyer, listen, we can't pay. We can stay broke right now. They told your lawyer that. That's what they told my lawyer, but we're going to give him a deal where he's going to cop out to a misdemeanor. It's just like he never done nothing. So they made me cop out to a charge that carries zero to six months. And I done 27 and a half. How you gonna make a man cop out to a charge? Zero to six months. Only the charge he owned don't charge. even care. My mama has right. I, I don't know if my mama gonna conk out today or tomorrow. You know I'd have still been in there right now fighting. Cause I got a good case, it's Sean. Right now, Sean, I got black and white right now showing that I didn't do a goddamn thing from an eyewitness <laughs> to a 911 call. Didn't do nothing. The only reason Charles Daniels took that deal, AKA Chuck, took that deal because of my mom. I don't know when, you know, she in the hospital, heart, stroke, everything. I got to get to that baby. She got to see me free. Real talk. You ain't did nothing wrong. They might help her out. You ain't did nothing wrong. They might back. You ain't did nothing wrong. They violated you. And she, right. she good. They violated you. She's shaking back because her son home. Right. Yeah, real talk. That's right. Her baby home. I got two sisters. One died of cancer. My oldest sister. My middle sister, Melissa, the one he cool with. Still there. And my mama. Indeed. That's who rocked with me the whole time. And my brother-in-law, Pat. Wow. That's who rocked with me the whole time. And you, and you, right. and, 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 Man, it's a blessing to have you on the show, man. I appreciate you for even coming. I know you guys came a long way, and I just appreciate it, man. Um, I, I like I said, man. I just hear these stories, man, of how they do y'all down there, especially Louisiana for some reason. Louisiana is the one, boy. I hear some stories down there that just blow Ooh, my hair. Man, Orleans. I ain't, I ain't, you know, putting everybody else parrot down. Orleans parrot. They filled the prisons up, man. Man, how many prisons down there? In Louisiana. Tip them at well, one, two, well, three, four, well, five, they, six, they seven. They merged them now, but they had so many. Oh, they, they, they literally had. Right. They was all full. Another thing I got to ask about is Boosie when he was locked up. You was locked up with. That's I know right. you were. You was locked up with yeah, Boosie. Right. Last time you made a statement, and um, the P, it was like he wasn't. Oh, he was in PC, but he, he wasn't. He, he, he wasn't. No, he, he did. He made it. The the guy put this. This the thing. I don't care what nobody say. I know for a fact, me, know for a fact that dude was trying to get Out of off PC. PC from the time he hit the prison. Right. I also know for a fact that the whole prison, majority of the guys from Baton Rouge was mouthing about they was looking for him and what they was going to do him. Right. And that's what made him want to come out even more. Even more. Even more to do when that shit picked up. That's what made me respect the cat. I don't know, period. I just right. know I'm from seeing him, you know, in, like I told you, in jail. Not the shit on them guys, but they don't come to Angola and, you know, we can give a fuck who you is. Don't matter about yeah, you being a don't matter about them having no, none, yeah, that, none of that. That shit might carry weight with the women, but you know, for the prison, it don't carry no weight. You got to, you got to put your work in. You got to show me. What you done, nigga, you going to wind up on the wrong end of the stick. Right. So with that being said, I respect the guy. Put the work in to come out. The guy made it somewhere around there by bass. He didn't make it to where most people well, like. See murder that. Yeah, well, see, in, a, see in the main that. prison. See, or some he live around up. Yeah. He live around up. Boosie never live around up. She uh, was that bass too. Wow. Right. So see the you, bass you heard first. that he was in the prison. You never got to see him. I saw him in everything. He was in Hawk. He was in Camp J. Bass was the first dome he went to. What? That's like a what was that? Camp J bass. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not the Camp J where they cut That's up the at. the camp I was telling you about. Just the yeah. camp a, as well. A camp where he's in population. He's in population, but it's so far away from the other camps. Where it go down at. They got their own camp. Right. 
the way the camp structured on the phone, they got their own thing. Right. It's Cam J, Cam D, you know C, you know they got. And the they're not putting him there because he a coward. Or no, 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 no. Just no. because of Boosie. And let's see murder. Most Listen to this, man. Remember I told you that high profile. See murder. Yeah, they come they going, they see murder there. just did more than him to get out of there. You know. Yeah, see murder went to the extent I'm not about. Once we told C, man, what you doing in that dome? You wait, what was happening, man? What they got you? Oh, they probably got me that because I'm who I am, brother. Man, you got to come out. That what you mean? What kind of dome is there? That ain't, he didn't even know. Like, he didn't know. Yeah, they I mean, they, they don't be known. Know so we once we done told him. And they hid their thing know. because of their status. They under, you know, it's that same shit they did with Wayne and Raggers out. Right. Yeah, straight to pieces. Right. You got too much power. Mm -hmm. Now it's on Wayne when he won't get in there and say, man, y'all violating me by right. putting me in protective custody. Because he got rights. I decided his history of every rights to That's roam right. around that prison. That's right. I want to come out. That's right. It would be foolish to say that because, you know what I mean? Say, so why throw yourself in the pool like that? Right. But that dude. Come out that fucking cell. I don't give a fuck. But some people just don't know their rights. Right. Huh? Some people don't know their rights. Yeah, they just yeah. don't know. Yeah, some don't, don't know. know. And some guys just feel, you know, that they have to make, they understand what well, type of situation the people putting them in. That's a catch-22. Boosie wasn't no coward. He that's wasn't what, pussy that's, or none of that there. That's but, the system. You know. But when you, when you heard him. he was in there, though, what did you, what did you, did you? I just saying. That's what they want the streets to hear. You know, I just saying. That's but what the system do. He just ain't never Boosie lived around us. Protective custody. That take away from all the morale he had right. on the street. Right. Mm -hmm. C murder is in protective custody. That take from all the morale right. they have on the street. <laughs> right. That's the all only reason. Strategy. That's their strategy. Right. Everything right. that goes on inside the prison is a strategy to make us collide. Right. Period. Where the free folks ain't got to do nothing and sit back and Why watch us. Kill each other. And see this guy right here. He always kept guys that's like that's right. us because we was wild and we ain't really play the law line bearing and all that there. See him. He kept us on our rights, what that's we can do it. and what we can't do. What the law, you know, allow us to do and what the law down. don't allow. That's what Most focus is down. young cat out of our generation <laughs> in the penitentiary. They had other guys that went in with him, but they didn't, they couldn't handle the long haul. Or either they was in there for just themselves. And I can't knock no guy from, you know, but you take that position and that position is for you to help the prison. Right. He was one of them guys that come under the tutelage of guys that really gave the game, and that guy learned a lot, man. I want to tell he you, he did it out his heart. Helped so many things. It's How crazy. How he help you? Because you said earlier that he helped you. Who? Mm -hmm. Oh, him? Oh, mm -hmm. he helped me a whole lot. I'm talking about. I go to the law lot. Well, sometimes he get mad at me. I send one out with friends. All the time. But man, look, I need this case right here. Let's write him a letter. And going up there to the law lot, bro. Get at the buff for me. He gonna send a he gonna send what I asked for back, but he gonna send a note back. Nigga, come the next time, come yourself and get it. <laughs> yeah, he, send me no letter. I hate letters. And he don't, don't like, like all that. Letter. He want us to be in yeah, their hands. Oh, learn to yeah. teach us the right. law. Right. Go ahead, you go know? play basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what you want. Go ahead, go ahead. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know you want to go play some football. Go play basketball. Go play football. Go play football. I got this. I'm going up in here. I'm going home. You go down there. I'm I'm mad shit. Nigga, I got a lawyer. Keep on having a lawyer here. When we ain't focused, he gonna make sure, man. You tripping? Let me ask you. Hold on. I gotta ask about this, Mac. You never ran into Mac when you was in there? Well, Mac was at Hunt. He was. And, and um, he came to Angola one time for a hospital thing. Right. One time. And I was in a room with him, but I ain't never. You I didn't get to that. I was just talking about his case because we know he was No, 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 no. I, I saw him. You don't really know too much about him, man. He was in Hunt. Yeah, by him being so in Hunt. You never went to Hunt. Yeah, I went to Hunt my last year. I went to Hunt from uh, March 2024 to March 1st this year when I come home. Okay, but he was, yeah, he was already he was gone. gone. He heard all the things about him, though. Yeah, he was all the guys I'm in the hunt, hunt, when I went to hunt, yeah. and I'm asking dudes about Matt, yeah, stamp Max, it. Yeah, yeah. Stamp. All good things about him. Stamp. Nothing bad. I that, just know that his that's case That's not just on no street shit. Right. I'm talking about literally just. All the way around the board. Helping guys. That's helping right. people. Stamp. That man was something that's serious right. in that population in hunts. Far as you know, mm -hmm. inspiring guys and helping guys, that, that shit he doing on the ground ain't ain't no fluke. Right. That shit he fucking with, he ain't fluking with it. That's I, what he I, did I know he's not fluking with it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that Boosie ain't no fluke. Before Boosie came to G, I couldn't stand it. You didn't like Boosie? I mean, I couldn't handle his voice. It was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm real shit. I couldn't, Cause, I, cause, I couldn't cause handle it. Because the way he rap. It was so squeaky, it sounded like a kid. It was too consistent on the squeaky side. Right. 
He ain't like the voice. So I don't you know, you know, you can hear his music, but I couldn't he listen to his voice. His voice is too annoying. I couldn't handle it. It get on my nerves after he go to the oh, next you song. Oh, you tell you that? He's straight. He what you tell him? You say he hard. Yeah, 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 I pull up on him. Bitch, you don't like this new boozy right here? I ain't heard him spit a whack verse since he come from Angola. I like the nigga that nigga can rap, but I didn't like his voice. Wait a minute. Say that again. Since he left Angola. I ain't heard a whack verse from Boozy. Right. He ain't since said, no, he left all, all Since home. him and that guy, uh, like a man, him and what's that boy? Who that is? Stand up. Oh, uh, 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 ATL. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I know you're talking Rich about. Rich Homie Quine. Rich Homie Quine. He ain't missed since. Right. Stand up yeah, like a man. He ain't right. missed a. Him and Mo 3 went man. crazy. Yeah, yeah he, he went crazy with Mo 3. That's right. <laughs> they run right. right. Boozy right now. Dallas, man. They let Boozy do features with the little guys and the little kids and stuff like that because the guys that he's posted, they ain't going to give him no feature because he's too hard. Right. Yeah, he too hard. He ain't missing. He just got out of the uh, uh, yeah, gun situation, and and, and I'm gonna with be the honest. Fears, huh? yeah. yeah, and 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 he still. I think he got out on, out on bun. Thank we don't God know what they're gonna do. I don't know how the it's lawyers it's are, it's in, in, up there in California. Yeah. You the you the man for that. You, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know how the lawyers up in California. But to catch him and I, I think they say his the yeah, one of his security guys. Fight. That had the gun, you know, because they gonna play you yeah, if they, they catch you any way wrong and you got some type of record. I and think you're I around seen that gun. Yeah, that they trying to get guy. him on. He got the gun in his yeah, back pocket. Yeah, they trying to say gun in the back pocket to keep and that's what that they, out. Yeah, that's, that's what they got him on. Uh, you know, but but you know he on paper or some shit, some type of shit where he can't have no gun. He's straight. So that's what the fear is fucking with him on. He's straight. He's straight. He's straight. Uh, he gonna be all right. He gonna be all right. He's straight. They know they. I mean, he slipped up. They know he slipped up. I think they just fucking with him. Though. They, they. Yeah. That, that's his last shot, right? Right. If you ask me, right. I don't speak for the people. I don't want to speak for him. I don't want to put nothing on him. They let him make that bind and slide out their feds just now. They know they fuck with him bad. I don't know what it was. Somebody sent that. Something wasn't right about the whole shit. Right. Something wasn't right. It's like that was entrapment. They literally had a stage to send that guy to jail. Right. Like the people say, even people say, what the fuck, you got a helicopter? You got real stars, like you got a helicopter file of boost from a helicopter, all the stars in California, you don't, that do shit. But you know they already have been stopping him outside of his estate. Yes, but that's what I'm saying, all the way they to- They had already been stopping him. You following him all the way to California? Man on a business venture. Man going, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that, 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 I mean, you stalked him out. And they bro. ain't really busting with no gun. They just seen him on film with the gun in his back pocket. That could have been a toy. Boy, that's my whole thing. Could have been a BB gun. Who to tell who the, you, you know? They don't even know. Right. You don't even know. You, you just know, know fools, it's a, yeah. They said that they literally seen a make, a copy of the gun. Who, 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 and then they seen the same make of the gun in his pocket. Man, Come on, man. Man, you, man what did you, man, they just tell us anything. Real they just rule. say anything. Wow. She don't even make sense. Nah, huh. it don't, man. So it's the same model we just seen. No, no, no. I, and I'm gonna I'm wrap this up, you guys. Like, mm -hmm. like, right. how can people get off? First of all, let's say the name of that podcast one more time. Streets to the pen. Streets to the pen. Uh, and when can we watch podcast. it? And where can we hear it? I say, give me at least, give us at least to the middle of this month, and it will be all the way up. The middle of July. Yeah, it will be up and running. Guaranteed. Y'all got to come back and, and, and oh, rock with me after some back. episodes right. come out. You know like I said, back. you on now for sure. You no, know we coming yeah. back. Man. Yeah. Listen, y'all can't do it without Lil Chucky because Lil Chucky right. came from 15, what time, what year, did, what, how old was you when you got out? Uh, 43. 15 right. years old to 43, you were locked up. Right. How crazy is that? For something you didn't do. For no, something I mean, you I didn't do. And like, you know I got to put it. No. And you know I got to put this on camera. I'm the best wide receiver in the world. Oh, man. <laughs> Not in the pit. They took all that from me. <laughs> See? I'm they talking about the from best me. in the hey, world, man. This was in <clears throat> Lil League in the city. In the Lil League tees in the city. This was the city shining star right here. They before you went to prison. And this is literally, literally, I'm talking about the sports. I'm talking about in the state, know him, literally. <laughs> Newspaper, all that shit, for playing sport, that guy there. And they took him out like Took that. all that. They shake you up. Wow. Hey, man, so, man, like I said, man, I thank y'all for coming on the show. We appreciate um, it. And, and definitely, man, hey, big, big buff, when you the next person come out, you bringing them on here to show me that, hey, man, this is all the person who you've helped. I love to meet some of those people. Okay. He bringing a few of them. He don't bring a few of them. Look, look, He can call this, for this, you. This is my saying right here. God said feed the people, so it's lunchtime. That's he. Wow. 
Straight like that. Wow. That's it. Right. Man. So, man, thank y'all for coming on the show, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate y'all, man. It's love, man. Little Chucky <laughs> Kunta. Come on, Big Buff. I let Stop playing. Stop the playing. Stop playing. Right. Stop playing. Baby. Right. Let oh, oh, yeah. She, hey, she going to Brown, you know. Yeah. And, and, and she getting ready to go up to Rhode Island, man. So I'm, I'm excited about my baby girl right, going man. to college, right. man. That's right. And yeah. she's 17. My son, 15. I can imagine my son. Right now, think about that. Going to prison. Going to prison at 15. At a lot, for and, a lot. And he didn't even do this. That's right. And they just caught him in the car or something. And me and you fighting to try to get him home. And he never could come home to 43. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about his mom. Man, that, I like the interview. Couldn't graduate mother, high bro. school, couldn't go to college, none of that. He took all that. Wow. Took all that. Wow. Yeah. Man, you dropping money. All right. I, I keep it if you got it. And then it got so hey. much, it's dropping everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Be honest with you, I was trying to handle it. I didn't want to do it on camera. That's for you, baby, bro. Oh, uh, yeah, that's for the baby. Aww. That's for the baby. Man, she going to love you. Hey, right. right. she been getting too much money lately. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to cut out. <laughs> she called and called me on while I was on camera. Y'all were doing the interview. She did call and she got, hey, listen. And, man, listen, I'm going to send you the, the I'm going to show you something when we get off of here. But it's just, oh, listen, I'm going I'm to I'm be real with y'all, man. This ain't Sorry. the last time we get together. No, no, no indeed. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you guys like you guys are part of Boss Talk 101. You hear me? That's up. So as y'all show go up, because it's going to go up. Indeed. I'm gonna definitely keep promoting it, and That's if there's right. anything you guys need to push out there through this channel, it's already done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So all you gotta do is Appreciate holler at you me. Man. You send it, say, "E man, I'm, we we doing this. We trying to put our sight on it. I'm here for y'all, bro. Right, right. And, I, and I ask y'all to do the same for me because y'all gonna pass me up. You're grand, you hear baby. me? Y'all gonna grand. <laughs> no, bro, no, just put it this way: we see you on top. Just put right. it there. Right. Check it, man. Check it top, top. Counter. Big Buff and that boy Chucky, man, been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Definitely. Yeah. Like Last that.